initially I wasn't um, so impressed by it, funnily enough. But, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting and it's got a little magical side to it. It's very hard to be around it for any extended period and not get, you know, caught up in the exciting part of it. The hobby, the passion, you know, the headache. Um, <laughs> I've been doing it so long, I don't really remember what it was like when I started. I try to, you know, go back to the beginnings and it's been a while. The longer you, I think, stay in any, any given field, you'll get rid of some problems and inherit some new ones, you know. It's an, ever, an ongoing process, but it's, it's a wonderful life. It's what has been for me. What have, have, you been, have there been any sort of many... Turn the chair tiny bit the other way, sorry, the other way, that's it, that's good. Have there been... Um, what, I mean, what, are the, what are the changes that you've seen? I mean, I, I know yours is quite a personal and quite a... Story, but. Um, the most noticeable change um, is the quantity of people coming into the profession but that goes hand in hand with the amazing art in the profession. Looking at them as artists, you know, per se not tattooers, but the quality is quite amazing. Truly impressive. I got involved after my father learned in London in King's Cross. The family went out to India and we ended up in Goa and they were tattooing out there, my folks. So my job was, at age 11, to uh, drum up a bit of publicity. I had to do the beaches every now and then with a stack of cards. I found that exceedingly difficult walking up to strangers, sunbathing, and like introducing myself and giving them a business card. A lot of them thought I was um, a local boy, would shoo me away like if I was coming to like beg or trying to sell them something, which I was actually trying to sell them something. But they didn't know I was a foreigner. And I didn't tattoo right away. I would draw for my dad. Um, we had a catalog with very small designs in it, and they didn't have any photocopies. There were no computers. If you wanted a photocopy, you had to go to the main town, which was over an hour away. So I used to draw things up for him using a grid system, like a small grid and then a larger grid, and just copy everything box by box. So that kind of got me involved in it. I didn't get the tattoo right away, you know. I liked that we had a tattoo house. I liked being tattooed young. Former rebellion, it was fun, even in a kind of loose traveler hippie community. When you're a little kid with a couple of tattoos, they kind of do a double take. It's like, what? <laughs> Aren't you a bit young? So I, I always felt uh, quite powerful having a tattoo artist as a father. It gave me strength. Are you speaking from a tattoo e or a tattooer's point of view? Because uh, no matter how showy or group oriented people might think this is, when they sit down to get a tattoo, it's it's a big moment of solitude. You know, you're on your own. <laughs> yeah, and it's you and you alone that has to go through it. So very private. Um, then again looking at conventions and magazines and TV shows, a lot of people like to be seen getting the tattoo, not just wearing it, but they like to get it done in a convention setting with an audience. So it's right across the board down to the individual. People may get the same tattoo designs, but they're doing for very different reasons. Very particular. Fa fashion, I believe, has just made it more accessible to do something they wanted to do anyway. You know? But it ain't fashion that gave them the desire to get tattooed. I think that starts for other reasons. Usually when people are young, they see a family member, something like that, some uncle come back from overseas, wore a tattoo on his forearm, and it marked them when they were age 10 or 9 or something, and they remembered it their whole life. And I always had this little idea that one day I'd maybe get one, you know. But I live on top of a mountain, so I'm not totally not in touch with the tattoo scene in big cities are different and uh, True.
um, I wouldn't know about mainstream accessible. Now one does, he does not even need to go into a tattoo shop to visit it. You can do it online or you can do it in a program. So yeah, it's definitely broadened uh, right across the board, the people that are getting into it that would not have wanted to go into a scary shop in a bad part of town, you know. Now they can go to the nice part and find a very open, colorful, art-based tattoo studio, which they were few and far between before. Um, one of my early inspirations in tattooing was Japanese. Um, I, I really like the bodysuit idea, the one design. Other cultures have done it too, tribal, Americana, old school, uh, Russian prison. You see people that fill in the entire thing, but I really was taken by the Japanese. So that, I do a version of that when I'm allowed. It's a Euro-American Japanese. It's all been filtered down. I've got the books, I kind of go back to the source now, but still it's got, I'm not a traditionalist per se. But my idea is based on Japanese suits, yeah. Central piece on the back, you know, accompanying pieces on the arms and legs and ribs, and the things all tied to tied together with a common background. That's really what I would like to get as many of those done before I'm gone. <laughs> well, apart from the obvious ones, like really into it, the other one just wants a taste. But no, the process is the same no matter how big or small. You still go through the act of changing yourself for life, making a decision that you know doesn't take into account anybody else but yourself, and uh, kind of making a visual statement of I did it. So size doesn't really matter. The big ones are different psychology behind it. I wouldn't dare to guess. Once again, the reasons really are diverse. Why does one man end up with a tribal suit and another a Japanese? Beyond taste, there is like luck. Uh, mood of the month. I think I have learned that over all these years, that the main drive we all have is this desire to be tattooed. Design comes in secondary, absolutely, because there are multiple choices at every turn that would suit just fine. What should I put on my elbow? Flower, you know, cloud, wave, they're all good. So the real drive is to be tattooed and that one's wondrous, who knows why. You know, the real reason behind that is very complicated. Trend-wise, I kind of like the Japanese for that because it's eternal. There's some styles that have been here a long time ago and they're still around. And then there's all the new ones that pop up and go through summer phases and stuff, which I do a lot less of since I don't do walk-ins. There was a summer of trees, and then there was a summer of owls, and then there was a, now we're in the summer of foxes and wolves. And how that gets set is a mystery to me. It's quite interesting. Somebody should hunt it down. Who sets the trend and why? Which photo of which person inspired a group you know, to follow? I've, since, since day one, we've tattooed right across the board. Since I started that much, I remember I could do a punk one day and a meter made the next. And, you know, a waiter, and then you do a lawyer, and then a surgeon shows up. So there's always been, it really is everybody. Some groups, maybe more than others, like I did a lot of punks when I started because they were really into loads of little tattoos, right? I, I do a majority of tattoo artists myself which is um, a very enjoyable um, situation since I'm dealing with people in the know. Um, no more sales, um, is in, you don't have to sell an idea, people understand it. If somebody rejects an idea and he's of the profession, he got it, he doesn't like it, we do something else and it's all very easy and it's fun actually. I really enjoy working with people in the same field. I learn. People push me to do things that are difficult or ways to do things extra rapidly, you know. Ways to achieve a lot with a little. There's all kinds of different, you know, pastimes just to keep it interesting. In the, in the outside world, it's an icebreaker. I go to the pool, I go to bodysuit, hey, I can talk to everybody. They all come and talk to me. So 
I would do talk to other people with tattoos, you give them the nod, whatever. I see another back piece, I'll go over and ask him who did it. It's, you know, we have a common interest. You especially feel that in the conventions when you're like 12,000 strong in a room and everybody's into the same thing, it's kind of fun. As far as it being the industry unified, it's like a family, obviously, you know, and there's cousins that don't talk and all the rest of it. I'm sure every profession has to be... There's not like a world voice for us or nothing, no. Each country has different associations and Tintin is head snat in France. There's one that looks after French legislation and stuff. So, um, but yeah, I, I know a lot of, I'll put it this way, most of my friends are in the business. <laughs> you know, you can't know everybody, there's more and more people. I've been watching this stuff with amazement. The rise and, and push of tattooing's boom, it, its invasion of every market and every media, its popularity growing right across the world. No, I think it's astonishing. I never would have dreamed when I started out that it would become this um, interesting to the world. You know, so where it's going from here, go I really don't know. There is an interesting side to it, seeing as it's a lot more difficult to change your look if you're tattooed than if you have like a nose ring piercing. And uh, as time goes by, a lot of these heavily tattooed people, you know, move into society. You know, jobs where they make decisions, whether they let the tattoo guy get the job now and stuff. And seeing as they got a whole suit, it's going to lighten up, you know. So I don't know. It's interesting. Very. Uh, I wait and see. Yeah. So do you think? So people's perceptions, do you think, have, have definitely altered. They're definitely relaxed. A lot more uptight about it. I mean, I'm still an oddity, but for different reasons. Like I said, I'm almost finished. When I go to the pool, the kids follow me around because you don't see a fully tattooed man every day. But I don't feel a lot of. Uh, okay, Switzerland. Every country is different. I'm sure there's parts of the planet where it's still not very good to be tattooed and I'd be better off hiding them. But as far as the big cities go and uh, the forefront of fashion and, what would you call it, uh, trend, uh, tattoos are very prominent. Which is bringing it in, into the household through the television, the, these shows that people now watch right across the world. You know. Do you think that they're, they're creating an, an unreal perception of, of, of tattoos and tattooing? Put it this way, since I've watched the tattoo shows, I look at all the other ones with a very different slant now. Once I've seen what they present of something I really know a lot about, and for the most part it's all right, but they make you know huge errors in it. Now I think every other show can be the same almost. Frightening thought. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't believe that's gone. I believe there's almost a false image. There's so many conventions and magazines and we all think it's uh, it's totally mainstream and the whole world will get tattooed, you know. Do things could change? And I, I think it's also normal that there's a certain amount of people that are not into tattooing. We can't all like the same things, can we? It, it, it'd be strange, you know. Apart from blue jeans, it seems to see a world world over, right? The biggest club in the world, the Blue Jean Club. But I, I, I do believe that there are definitely um, social circles where tattoos are just not on and will stay that way, I think. Oh, the hard sell is on and has been for a while, I agree with you. And that's a funny question, do they all like the tattoos because the television told them to? Or are they just feeling like it's okay now because the TV said it's fine? Because people have always liked, there's always been a certain amount of people that get tattooed. Before it was popular, we worked in this country fine. Never had a shortage of work. And, and like I said again, right across the board, everybody. Policemen to criminals. Seriously, you know, all of them. So maybe a few people now watch the show and think, well, it's popular, mum won't kill me, I think I can do it. That's my defense, it's, it's, you know, 
J-Lo did it or something like that. But whether it's inside, it might be inciting people to start working in the business because they make it look very glamorous indeed. You don't see the cleaning of the toilets and the cleaning of the tools and, the, you know, they don't explain that this is a job where we literally swim in people's bodily fluids and blood and it's a high-risk job, very dangerous actually, if you want to talk about that. That's not presented properly in some ways. You, you can catch a disease, um, you can inf less easy to infect somebody. Than we always speak, you always hear speak about the customer, what about the artist? We are the ones receiving people in our local day in, after day, after day, after day. Something to be thought about. And just uh, what about uh, techniques? I mean, have techniques changed? Since you started tattooing? Mm, the machine I use today was patented in 1927 and is the same, literally. The needle quality has gotten, I'd like to say, better. <laughs> they change a lot. The knowledge has been shared a bit more. Now we get into a tricky zone here. Yeah, it's changing, it's in an evolution. Some parts of tattooing have actually moved backwards a little bit. Just from my experience, I mean, I wait, I wait to see, but the loss of apprenticeship is, is not always the best of things because knowledge does not get passed down. And that was important, I think. Not to say that you can't figure it out yourself. If, if I have seen the most amazing artists with only two years tattooing. And I have been speechless um, because they got the right help and the right information and the aptitude to put it into effect, you know, to work. It's not enough knowing the secret, you've got to understand it and then use it, you know. Um, knowledge floats around quite freely today, but not everybody's using it. I think rebellion is a massive part of it. It's this, 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 being able to separate yourself from the group. This is me. That is, is, is one major motivating factor. And funnily enough, that's what I wanted at first. By the time I had my second tattooing, I wanted to belong to the tattoo family. So I went from wanting to be totally, you know, separate to wanting to be part of the group, all in two tattoos. <laughs> these ADDs, um, I think, are ageless. You have no age to feel like this. I've done massive tattoos on, on, on men in their 50s, you know, that have decided, right, that's it, I'm doing it, and changing myself and getting a whole back piece suddenly, quite late in life. It's not only a young man's game, change comes at all age. And it does represent some form of change. If somebody comes to see me to get a seriously big tattoo, I believe that's a moment in their life where they're sorting a lot of stuff out. I know it's been my experience. You readjust to your, to your own visual, visualization of yourself, how you see yourself, self-perception, strength. Tattoos are a lot like armor, a visual, you know, marking of, I totally enjoy walking topless in a festival and having a fully tattooed torso. It's a, it's a, it's a wonderful rush, <laughs> i got to admit, you know. All I see when I look at all my tattoos is I don't know how I survived them. There was such an ordeal. Each and every one was so horrific <laughs> and so painful. Uh, there's some parts of the body that I don't even remember. So I guess it, it more gives me a feeling of um, confidence or self-image again. I managed to, to, to beat that. You know, it made, makes me feel... Because I know that when people look at the whole body, that it's a big part of when people go, <sighs> when they see your tattoos, is they're imagining the pain you went through. Yeah? So it's real primitive, this thing about feeling good about, look how tough I am, you know, and it's true. Look what I managed to survive. That makes me, you know, tough, I don't know. So that's the feeling you get out of it, you, or I do. Not that I'm walking around looking for a fight or anything. I actually found rather than chase people away, it kind of brings them towards me. When I go out and display my body, people go, wow, you know, how long did that take? And like, can I have a look? And 
Has that been forever or has that been recently? Pretty much forever in my life. Had, I grew up with long hair and a kind of hippie family. So I've always had, you know, people going, oh my God, look at them. Tattoos have been more, more of an asset than anything to me throughout my life. I was able to sit on the back of the bus in San Francisco when I was 17, and that's where all the tough guy, crazy loonies sit, and they all left me alone because I had loads of tattoos, so it was great. You know, it's like I fit right in, and I was an imposter, like. A little nostalgic, a little sad sometimes that I chose a medium that's so transitional. Only the lifespan of the wearer. Photos live on, I know, but I should have worked in bronze. I would have lasted for a thousand years. A lot of blood, sweat and tears, a lot of energy. Um, it's, it's a huge responsibility, bigger than... I don't know, ever, to change people for life has been on my mind since the beginning. Am I worthy? Is it the right design? Do they know what they're doing? Yeah. But to worry about if they do it for the right reason. I, I refuse to do things I don't think are good ideas or I think they're doing for the wrong reason. I'll go that far to say no. Um, hopefully I do them a favor and if they don't get it, they go and get it from somebody else, well, so be it. But I don't need to be party to something I don't believe in. I'm not into facial tattooing in a big way, or even hands for that matter. You need to have a lot of tattoos before I do your hands. Some old, old, old um, approaches, you know, you didn't see a guy with hands and neck until he was full and it overflowed. You know, the serious old sailor that's retired and he's covered everywhere, well, that guy filled his body up kind of. It kind of scares me that a lot of people start with the forearms and the neck, and then you see them without any clothes on and they're all naked. Now they have to fill in. <laughs> so in a way, they've just committed from the beginning rather than be shy about it. But yeah, obviously the new generation does surprise me in tattooing. They're a lot more bold about it. They're a lot more showy. It took me 20 years of tattooing before I got a tattoo that passed outside of the clothesline. I kept it all very discreet. Then again, now I travel with a t-shirt and fly on the airplane and it's just fine. So yeah, times are changing.